I am me, and since you are you, and I was you, and well, <laughs> since you're here, and I'm here, and I was you. Julie Andrews has to be one of Hollywood's most precious treasured icon. And with her classic status in the industry, you know that Miss Andrews also lived in the most fabulous properties to match. Not only does she own stunning manors in her native England, she's also lived across the pond in gorgeous California. With over seven decades of acclaimed film, TV, Broadway, and music achievements to her name, Julie Andrews holds a special place in the hearts of millions of fans around the world. Before she was Hollywood royalty, Julie Andrews began as a humble English girl with a natural angelic voice making her stage debut at age 11 for a Fleet Street Club luncheon in London. When we got started, uh, I think in music, in terms of writing, and we packaged the books with as much. Growing up in Walton on Thames during World War II, young Julie found escape from the turmoil in music and performing. At the age of 13, Julie was chosen to perform at the Royal Command Variety Performance. And my 19 Andrews made her Broadway debut, launching her into leading lady fame. Her biggest role yet came when she was cast as Eliza Doolittle in the West End production of My Fair Lady in 1956. Though perhaps best known as the magical nanny Mary Poppins or the singing nun in The Sound of Music, few may realize Andrews is also a woman of remarkable real estate. From lavish London townhouses to sprawling mansions and family retreats, her homes tell their own captivating story. Our celebrated actress has owned her fair share of stunning properties across the pond and overseas, but a select few stand out for their size, style, and significance in her journey. In London's exclusive Belgravian neighborhood sits a magnificent white stuccoed manor that once belonged to Dame Julie in the swinging 70s. Built in 1835 in a sought-after garden square, this six-bedroom Georgian beauty speaks to Andrew's star status and regal reputation. Though she and her husband, Blake Edwards, left some original period features in the home, they renovated and modernized the interiors. Grand entertaining spaces with soaring ceilings, plush modern textiles, and top-of-the-line amenities set the scene for Andrew's lively celebrity parties. Fellow stars like Peter Sellers and Omar Sharif were known to mingle in the lavish lounge or dine at her decadent dining table into the wee hours. Encompassing 7,000 square feet, this historic residence shows expansive reception areas, a cinema, a wine cellar, a gym, and a private spa, complete with a jacuzzi, steam room, and sauna. The townhouse mansion's bathrooms are inspired by Tom Ford. They include heated floors in the winter and air conditioning in the summer. Crafted by artisans with experience from prestigious locations like Windsor Castle and the Palace of Westminster, the majestic entrance hall on the ground floor leads to a staircase and a seven-person elevator. A formal dining room seating 12 to 14, a family kitchen and a breakfast room are set beside the entrance hall, while the first floor boasts a double reception room with soaring ceilings. Outside, there are private gardens and over 650 square feet of entertaining space, including a balcony and three expansive terraces. Nearly 50 years since Andrews resided there, the 7,000 plus square foot pad made real estate history in 2022, renting for an eye-watering 35,000 pounds per week, the highest on record for the area. This landmark townhouse remains an unforgettable gem, marking the height of Julie Andrews' fame and fortune. Craving more room for their growing family in the 70s, Julie and her husband purchased a breathtaking Victorian mansion in London's idyllic Wimbledon Village. Perched on over an acre of landscape grounds, this regal 1860s residence was truly fit for a queen of the silver screen. Boasting period grandeur with soaring rooms, ornate fireplaces and Juliet balconies, it still boasted modern luxuries too. Originally split into separate wings, Julie and Blake put together the layout during their 20-year residence. Expanding it to a whopping 12 bedrooms and 9 bathrooms, the house accommodated their 5 children and constant flow of visitors in style. With a private pub, tennis court, and duck pond out the back, the estate had it all and then some. But beyond the luxury, this Wimbledon mansion held special meaning as the beloved backdrop for their kids' childhood and most cherished family memories. When it finally sold in 
2022 for over 16 million pounds after 50 years off market, Andrew parted with more than just the keys, but with the nostalgia of the chapter of memorable days past. Leaving Britain more permanently in the late 80s, Julie Andrews also put down American roots in sunny Brentwood, California. Proving she could trade lavish estates for moderate family living, Julie's new four-bed, three-bath colonial home felt worlds away from the bustle of Hollywood. Though there might not have been too many photos of this house, listings describe this property as bathed in natural lights with scenic mountain views. And the open concept interiors have a casual warmth to them. It also comes with plenty of backyard space for gardening, swimming, and spending time with grandchildren. Andrews created a tranquil homestead focused on her family here. Showing how even an icon valued simplicity in her golden years, Julie held onto the modest retreat for over 30 years. When she finally sold this place in 2021 for nearly $3 million, the cozy California nest surely left an imprint on her heart. From Regency London townhouses to sprawling country manors, Julie Andrews savored some of the finest properties England had to offer during her legendary career. Even while crossing the pond, she learned to prioritize family over real estate opulence in her Brentwood home. Julie Andrews certainly made herself quite comfortable in some of the finest properties around the globe. Where she lays her hat or tiara will always hold special meaning for a woman whose heart lies both across the sea and stateside. That wraps up today's tour, but before you head out, share your thoughts on this. If you were to choose between grand, opulent residences or a more serene and family-focused environment, which one would you choose and why? Let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to like, subscribe and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer and I'll see you all next time. Bye!